Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, April 17th, 2013. We begin with a quick update from the world of technology as it applies to medicine. Do you remember the last time you actually used a DVD for information storage purposes? Still, the optic technology used to read discs is quite sophisticated and well-developed, which is why a team over in Sweden have actually been able to repurpose a DVD player into a laser scanning microscope. This might sound like a more of a hacker DIY novelty, but it actually has huge implications for medicine in developing countries and the rest of the world. Right now, much analysis for medical purposes is done using flow cytometry. Basically, a laser is shot at a biological sample flowing through liquid, and the light that is scattered or emitted by the sample is analyzed by a bunch of scanners. Now, this DVD-based system can perform similar, if not identical, tests for many types of analysis. Imaging of specific cells, proteins, DNA, and RNA with a 1 micrometer resolution. A flow cytometry setup costs around $30,000 US, whereas the team thinks a mass-produced lab on a DVD would cost around $200 US. And as a demonstration, they analyzed a specific type of immune cell that is usually done with flow cytometry for HIV testing, which means this comparatively very inexpensive and simple system could allow for HIV and other medical diagnostic tests on the spot within a few minutes and potentially all around the world. Next is a story from the world of chemistry. We here at Brainstorm love our renewable energy technologies. They are vitally important for helping our civilization become cleaner and more sustainable. However, even as the technology improves, there are other factors to consider when talking about large-scale implementation of renewable energy. So we also like a system developed by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory for the creation of hybrid solar gas power. You see, natural gas, aka methane, is a fossil fuel that is relatively abundant and inexpensive. Burning this for power still obviously causes pollution, but its convenience means it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Which is why the aforementioned system is designed to make natural gas-powered plants decrease fuel usage by 20%, while still producing the same amount of power. The trick is using solar energy focusing the sunlight to generate heat and convert the methane into a more energy-rich fuel. Four-foot-long reflective dishes concentrate the sunlight toward chemical reactors that distribute heat through small channels containing methane and a catalyst. An impressive 60% of the total solar energy is being efficiently converted into chemical energy in the form of this new fuel product. The researchers even think the efficiency could improve with more development on the heat exchangers within the system. Other than greatly boosting efficiency, the system is also extremely scalable. The bigger the power plant, the more dish reactor devices you need, with a large-scale power plant needing about 3,000. The next step is finding efficient ways to manufacture the components of the system and testing it on a large scale. They believe that such hybrid systems can easily become competitive with conventional power plants while still reducing greenhouse emissions. Lastly, we have news from the world of neuroscience. Everybody and their grandmother is talking about the Clarity System, a process for turning a brain transparent for imaging. But we like to be the hipsters of brain imaging news, so here's something you probably haven't heard of. A bunch of institutions have worked together to develop a system for scanning the brains of awake and unrestrained mice. You see, if scientists need to image the brain of a mouse to study a disease model or to see the effects of an experimental drug, they can't just ask the mouse to stay still. Which means the mouse is either anesthetized or heavily restrained. These conditions could easily alter the results of testing and the accuracy of the brain scans compared to normal functioning. So this group developed the AwakeSpect system, which works by injecting a substance in the brain that then collects in certain areas based on function and emits single photons of gamma radiation that can be detected. This isn't the new part, as it's been used for imaging and research and even some human medical imaging, so it's safe. The new stuff is what they've added to the system specifically a fancy new infrared camera and a commercially available CT scan. The mouse can be placed in a transparent but still pretty small enclosure with some harmless markers placed on its face. 
The infrared camera tracks the markers and therefore the orientation of the mouse's head, allowing the SPECT and CT scanning algorithms to readjust for the movement of the mouse while it's being scanned. To test this out, they imaged the brain of a mouse both fully awake and anesthetized, as if it was undergoing a conventional scan. What they found is that the drug is metabolized and imaged differently between the awake and the asleep mouse, meaning the system has broader implications for neuroscience research in general. The group plan on continuing to refine the process and hope it could even be scaled up to humans one day. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our second story, what hybrid renewable traditional power source would you develop? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.